Sailor Moon. What you doing there with your stick? Oh, oh. Hi, I'm Sailor Tortilla, and I really like Sailor Moon. There's a lot of hype surrounding this figure, and I'll just cut to the chase. This thing was announced in 2019, and some people in 2022 still don't have it. So this is like the pre-unboxing. I just want to know what number figure I got. I'm going to react to it. Ooh, there's a QR code. So let's find out what ungodly number it is. They didn't write it! Oh, it's on the back. <laughs> I'm like, where the f*** is the number? No, it's 1636. I would have preferred 1666. Pretend I never looked at it and open it again. Yes, this is the figure that I flew all the way to France to see. It was inside of some glass and I couldn't put my grubby fingers on it. This is also one of the most expensive and largest Sailor Moon figures I have, so take a look at my other videos. It took a really long time to get here. I actually paid the shipping in November. It is April. Am I salty about it? A hundred percent salty, but I do feel like I have lived in a simulation of what it feels like to not have ordered this. Quick overview here of the packaging. It is an Art Nouveau style with a faded Super Sailor Moon on it. It has the current American logo as well as basically Sume over here and Sume over there and Sume over here. So on the back, you'll find a similar design as well as some flavor text and information about the figure itself. Please ignore everything you just saw in the back. That's totally not the figure. It's totally not that I filmed this afterwards. Okay, shiny, shiny sticker, important in case this gets bootlegged, look for that. Here's a QR code, I believe it leads to some kind of instructions, uh, information on the figure itself, and please pause here for some flavor text. What's interesting to me here is that it says it's the first foray into making Sailor Moon figures, and I kind of wish that Sume Art never does that again, and I'll tell you why soon. Of course, with a figure this expensive, it's going to bring a certificate of authenticity. Make sure it's on hard cardstock and has this shiny, shiny Sume sticker. Finally, here's the moment of truth. Let's see how this thing came packaged. So it looks like Sailor Moon comes in one entire piece, which is pretty rare for resin figures, kind of interesting. Also kind of opens it up to accidental damage and shipping, but don't get me started. You've seen my figure videos, you know that things can definitely go wrong. What's in this hole? Nothing at all. The very first thing I noticed about this figure was how heavy the base was. It is extremely heavy and it was super, super hard to take off this plastic. It is the heaviest part of the figure, which makes sense, right? That's how it's gonna stand up. But it comes all pre-assembled like this. It's got some print on the bottom, pretty neat. Never gonna look at that again. Everybody knows this thing's problematic. According to Sume, this ribbon is the reason why there were shipping delays. Each Sume comes with a unique plaque with your unique number. I have no idea if it had anything to do with the order they were shipped in or the order they were ordered in. It still absolutely blows my mind that this thing ships with the hair and the bows all attached, but I digress. Uh, first thing I noticed was that her hair is banana yellow. Uh, sometimes it's school bus yellow. I do have a yellow grading system on my channel. When I was originally examining this, I thought this was a defect. These little white spots on the skirt. I thought they had just not painted it all the way, but it looks like this is actually the style they've gone for instead of using different finishes on the paint for the most part. They do the shading manually. I, I can't really explain it. It's got these pale points. What the hell is this? Oh. I am inclined to be extremely critical of this figure. Not only is it one of the most expensive official Sailor Moon figures, it just took far too long to arrive. I don't really agree with the way that Sume has perhaps a four year backlog on figures and still continues to announce them. I can tell you that I'm editing here in early June and people are still receiving this damn figure and Sume has like a four year backlog. I'm gonna actually leave in my original reaction here. Her face is kind of not cute. To be honest with you. I like the Odango shields. I like that they're see-through. If you're hearing disappointment, it's because it's disappointment. One of the weird things are these little white spots in there to simulate the hair shine. Usually they're not white, they're usually some kind of shading. You will also notice a little hair hole in the pigtail. That's gonna hold that ribbon that's gonna give me issues later. For about one second, I tried to put this uh, together and then I decided I needed to take a little field trip. Before I put this in there, 
I'm gonna trip to the office. Don't judge me for my mess, but please judge me for my, well, uh, I forgot her name, gotta blur that out. Ah, yes, here we go. <laughs> First look at our uh, great and terrible comparison. Hmm. Back to the unboxing we go. This part here is still way more tricky than it should be, and I don't think that mine is still all the way in. This looks like a lollipop. And what I'm about to find is that it has no magnet and no actual way to attach the figure. You just have to really hope and pray that the hand does hold it. Please tell me I did this wrong and this isn't how it is. Yeah, what the hell? Then I decided it was a better idea to put the ribbon on, but I couldn't figure that out either. This is such a hot mess. Yo guys, I don't think I feel very strongly about this and I feel really guilty about it because I waited three years to get this and I was really stressed about it. My experience wasn't good. I don't think I'd buy from Sume again. To put it into perspective, this figure was announced May 2019, and a little afterwards they announced the fan piece by Gakabox, right? The Eternal Sailor Moon, which is, you know, we don't get Eternal Sailor Moon figures. And I feel more strongly about that one than I do about this one. So when they first announced this, the heart was completely red. And her brooch was definitely red in Sailor Moon S, so a little weird that Toei came back and told them no. I already knew this because I saw the figure in France, but I, I knew I didn't like the pink. Sailor Moon has deep reds and deep blues, and and let me tell you something, the blue on this is really washed out. Um, it really is like a navy. I am gonna give this like a day, think about it, look at it. And I also needed some time to compare it to my other Sailor Moon figures that are kind of in the same price range, really. There are interesting aspects to this figure. I think the ribbon is a cool touch, but it's got those weird white lines in the hair. And the bow is mauve, which is that color that Toei likes to put on Sailor Moon, except on the anime color versions, which is super annoying. And these weird little white lines. If every Sailor Moon fan on Earth to get a nice official Sailor Moon figure, if we have to spend $600 just to get something nice, like, dude, I'm sorry, this is my reaction. I feel really bad, but like, I don't because I spent $600. I spent so much time sending support tickets just to get it. Obviously it got here, but it was annoying that I paid shipping in November and it didn't ship until April. I also want you to peer into my mind for a little bit because I've had these thoughts since 2019. When Sume Art announces a new figure, they always show like a silhouette of it so you have an idea of what it's going to look like and they build anticipation. Dude, I thought she was going to have butterfly wings and butterflies and it just makes too much sense to have butterflies instead of whatever this all is. But on to things I'm more positive about. This is my Egg Studio Sailor Moon, and she's my current favorite. Of course, here's our Sume Super Sailor Moon, and this is the Gaka Box Eternal Sailor Moon. All of them are really cool. Different scales, around the same price. Well, except the Egg Studio. Actually, the Egg Studio was like 300. It was insane. They're making a Sailor Mars. It looks dope as hell. These all take up a lot of space, but I feel like from this angle, you can really tell the difference in the size of the body. We have one four scale on the front, one five scale in the back, and one six scale in the middle. It's also important that we stop here and focus on the bases. They got really creative with all of these, and I don't think a single one really wins or is the best. No, 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 you know what? This one looks amazing from the front. This is the one that to me stands out because of these bright primary colors. The blue is beyond blue, the red is beyond red. What are we looking at? Why are we why are we looking back here? Oh. Okay, anyway, back to Sailor Moon. This is my favorite, even though her face doesn't really look anime accurate and her bangs are huge and she's got a giant butt. It's crazy. I do think the Sume looks cool from this angle with the swirly swirls. I feel like there's more action if you look at it from the top than from the front. I will say that the sculpt on the body is really smooth and I like the way that her butt bow sticks out to the sides. That's really nice. And when you take a really close look at this ribbon, you'll see it kind of changes the way it looks when you look through it. But there's glitter inside of the ribbon and I almost feel like this is kind of how the rest of the figure should have been. Could we not have added 
glitter and shine to other things. I mean, maybe that's just how they do figures, but it's not for me because all these other guys look way cooler to me. Now I'm going to mention my biggest gripe with this figure. It's the face. The eyes don't feel like Sailor Moon to me, and I know she's serious when she's in this pose, but check this out. I got a figure a little while ago that's going to best illustrate my biggest issue with the face on the Sume. So you'll see she's got round eye lights. Those are those white circles in her eyes. Now this figure, they're not white because it's a stylistic choice, but you'll see how they're oval. It feels so much more like, oh no, 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 wait, she has closed eyes. Um, it feels so much more like Sailor Moon than the Sume just because they're more oval, they're a little taller, and her eyes are less square. It's the eyes that really kill me. It's the eyes that have really been bothering me this whole time. And also this is from E2046 and it's really cute. There's a video about it on TikTok. But anyway, you go back to your spot. Good little Sailor Moon. Good little Sailor Moon with a nice face. Ah, this looks like the boogeyman after looking at that other figure. Anyway, you know I'm obligated to spin, spin, spin the Sailor Moon. I have an electronic spinner, but actually this thing is uh, so heavy that it would break it if I used it. So here's a 360 view. I don't have a lot more to say about this. The Sume Art Super Sailor Moon certainly is a figure, and it's going to be very hard to get your hands on now. I really wish that Sailor Moon toys in general were more accessible. Uh, ugh, this heart, it kills me. It kills me. You know why the red was really nice? Because it reflected the roses and it kind of like sent the roses into infinity. It was a cool reflection effect. So here's one more angle of all of my sailor girls. But more importantly, I'm going to pull out the most important piece. It's this Ben Presto Eternal Sailor Moon. You know why? Because she's 25 bucks and they are absolutely making all of the sailor senshi. And you know what? She's a good size and she's cheap. I don't know why I'm telling you this. Also, the Sume left skid marks on my table. This, however, is my favorite angle because you can't see her horrible eyes. I think it's also cool to see all of these from the back. They're very different. Um, I don't think anybody really displays any of their figures facing away from them, but I don't know. I just might at some point just out of boredom. They all look really cool. And I want to look at everything possible. Here's the back of everybody's head because apparently Odongos are hard. Uh, <laughs> they're all quite different. It's me from the future. So I just want to interject here and say I'm leaving my closing thoughts from my second day of unopening this figure. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a lot. I have a lot of strong opinions this time, which is fairly unusual. Um, is it? I don't know. And here you go. Check it out. I gave it another day and I still kind of feel the same way about the Sume art. I wish the colors were more vibrant. My husband pointed out that in the opening sequence, her skirt has little white bits too, so I can't be salty about it, but eh, I don't know why the hair is so pale. I really don't like this red kind of off red nonsense that they had on the original S8 figure arts. Like the boots and the bow, why are they so blue? Sailor Moon the show has so many bright beautiful colors, like it, there's no there's no excuse for it. But anyway, that's it! That's my opinion! But at the same time, I am the only YouTuber who has all three of these, and I am the only one who feels this way, so there must be a reason for it, it's probably because I have all three of these big puppies so when you know better you do better and you complain more don't worry moonies you don't have to get them loan just to buy sailor moon figures you can uh just get these little baby figures they're not even baby they're they're pretty big considering all the other sailor moon stuff we get so I don't know. I know that this figure is a big deal to a lot of people, and I hope that doesn't invalidate it. It's very nice, and it's very official, which is the special thing. Comparison video with non-Sailor Moon figures coming up so you can see what the hell am I talking about. I'm staring at some right right over yonder here. If you just, <laughs> just inch on over here. Look at this bad boy. Look at this bad boy. That is a nice figure. All right. Woo! Mystery smoothie! Bye!
seriously, this is like one of those horror movies where the painting's always looking at you, just following you. So if anybody wants to trade me um, the 2020 Alucard Helsing statue that has him kicking a Nazi's head right off his body, uh, I'll trade it. <laughs> I'll trade the Sumi art for that figure specifically. If, if, if you know, you know. If you don't, don't worry about it. You've never seen it. Where do you have this open? Uh, Sailor Tortilla style. Red sauce, green sauce, fresco queso, queso fresco.